Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to D News Plus again today. I am Trace, and I'm here with my buddy, Dr. Ian O'Neill. Hi there, Trace. And we're learning how the doctor got to be in the Ian O'Neill part, and it was mainly because of the great ball of gas at the center of our solar system, the Soon. It's called the Soon? The Sun. The Sun. Or Sol. Soul. Soul. Ooh, that sounds fancy. It's nice. Kind of science fiction -y. Yeah, kind of cool. So I was talking to producer Brian, and uh, we were both like, Ian literally looked at the sun and got a doctorate out of that. I did. It's true. Yeah. But don't directly look at the sun. Yeah, but Just don't do it. And that's exactly right. We were always told, don't look at the sun. Yeah, and you shouldn't. Well... But that's what your job was, was to look at the sun. No, fortunately, I mean, yeah, the sun's very bright. And don't look at the sun with your naked eye and certainly don't look at it through a telescope. That's one thing that is very dangerous because it can damage your eyesight for life. Fortunately, the World Space Agency is like NASA, the European Space Agency, even the Japanese Space Agency. JAXA. JAXA. That's the best one. It's, it's I mean, so in good. terms of the name, it's, it's got so the coolest good. name. Yeah, see, it's got the cool name. And it's got quite a cool graphic as well. Yeah. Um, they have observatories in space. So ideally, you want to put a telescope in space, don't you? I mean, it's, it's going to be beyond the Earth's atmosphere because any telescopes down here on Earth has to look through our atmosphere. And often it's a little bit jiggly. It's going to be very blurry. And the sun is no exception, even though it's really close we need to have those powerful telescopes in space. So the key one that you've probably seen is all the beautiful posters and all the online imagery of the sun recently has come from NASA's Solar Dynamic Observatory, or SDO. Yeah, that one's cool. Yeah, it's, it's a cool mission, and it's doing some amazing science. So the SDO basically looks at the lower parts of um, the sun's atmosphere and the upper parts of its other, other, other layers to see these very small scale structures and seeing how they interact with coronal plasma. Um, so it's just a beautiful look. I mean, it looks amazing. Yeah, it so ideally, really does. you want these things in space because you get these high definition views. Also, we got observatories that are sitting in like this area of gravitational stability, which is called Lagrangian point. Lagrangian point. Lagrangian. Point. Lagrangian. Uh, the L. I don't know. <laughs> I think they're, it's probably both. Probably, You're British. Look at Lagrangian. 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 Lagrange, Lagrange sounds point. very nice. Yeah. So it's like a million kilometers away from the surface of the Earth in the direction of the sun. And so it's kind of useful to put observatories in that area. So in this area of gravitational calm, you've got SOHO, which is a joint NASA and ESA mission, which is basically a, a, quite an old old telescope now which is constantly looking at the sun looking at space weather effects looking at these coronal mass ejections flying out into, into interplanetary space um it's a really cool mission it's been going for a long time but it's going to eventually die it's getting old yeah um but also you've got these observatories that sit directly in the stream of the solar wind so if there's anything coming at earth we get an advanced warning like an early warning system it's definitely an early warning system so basically to protect us against space weather events we've got these little like the probes that will sit there and say, hey, you know, there's a hey, big there's cloud a of, of particles, particles heading your way. Hey, there's some Astronauts. particles. Yeah, Astro hey, Earth, particles are coming. Particles, guys. You got it. That's what they say. It just sounds and, like that? Yeah, if you want. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they, 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 it warns like astronauts to get in, into the International Space Station if they're spacewalking or whatever. So, so wow. that's really cool. But then uh, down here on Earth, I mean, traditionally, obviously, to look, look at the sun, we look at it with telescopes here on Earth. And one cool way of doing it, you'll see like solar observatories. So like uh, near where I live in Los Angeles on the top of Mount Wilson, there's a couple of solar observatories and they're basically these big towers. So how does it work? Yeah. Yeah. So basically, it's just like a big tower, a lens that sits on the top of this tower and it projects an image of the sun down onto this like circular table almost and you can actually see the disk of the sun you can see things almost move it's it's a beautiful that thing. sounds creepy it's, it's amazing but also it's kind of extra creepy because you got like the uh interference from the atmosphere so it kind of makes it shimmer like it's, wiggles it's really beautiful it's, that's it's neat. an amazing thing i want to go next time i visit it's cool it's a nice hands-on way of seeing solar physics up close and i imagine that that kind of technology has is one of the first ways we started to really observe the sun one of the first ways and and still the probably the best way for amateur astronomers is the projection method so basically you have like a pinhole camera so what you'll do you put a pin into a piece of paper and you will project the image of the sun onto like um, onto a screen and that's a good way of viewing like solar eclipses yeah you can do yeah that. and it's a very safe way of doing it it's a lot of fun and you can do it with the family and kids and everybody can en enjoy that it's, yeah it's, and you can really just see it. the sun which yeah. is so weird you can actually think see about. the distance i mean technically we're seeing the sun all the time or at least the result of it but we never really look at it 
Yeah, and the closer you look, the more detail you will see. So, I mean, like these amazing uh, NASA and European um, observatories, you get to see some of the most amazing, incredible detail in the lower atmosphere. You get to see these magnetic structures. Um, you get to see these coronal mass ejections, like big bubbles blowing up into interplanetary space. It flares a whole lot. It's, yeah. it's great. It's, it's an amazing field. Yeah, I mean, it seems like there's a lot to study, even though you were saying earlier uh, that you really only studied a very small part of this whole system, right? Exactly, yeah. And and the sun is almost like a laboratory. It's, it's a gold mine for stellar scientists. So if we want to understand what's going on in the sun, we also understand what's going on in other stars, or at least stars that are very similar like to ours. Like main sequence stars about the same mass. Exactly. And, and, and sometimes you say to people, okay, it's our nearest star. And it's like, oh, the sun's a star? Well, yeah. yeah. It's, it, yeah. it's not necessarily a common sense, uh, although it kind of is. But, you know, when actually when the penny drops and they think, okay, well, actually, this is a star. It's close. And we can actually study it and get a lot of detail mm -hmm. from, from, from these studies. And my field was, as you say, was very, very small. It was just looking at these coronal loops. So basically, I wanted to know why these coronal loops were so hot. I wanted to know why the, uh, the solar corona, its atmosphere, was so hot. And by doing that, I just looked at the motion of plasma around these loops and see how they're heated by magnetism. So that sounds amazing. Mm -hmm. How do you see that? Because the sun's big and bright. So how do you find a coronal loop and then and image it in a way or get its spectra or whatever it is that you have to do? How do you get that information? Yeah, so we've had several missions that have been doing this. So like the SOHO mission, the, the joint NASA um, ESA mission, um, you're able to use different filters. So basically you can filter out certain light from the sun. And if you look at different wavelengths of the sun, each wavelength corresponds to a different temperature of plasma. So if you look at, um, at a certain wavelength that corresponds to a coronal temperature, you'll only see features in the corona that's around about a million degrees. Mm -hmm. And so like the SDO, the, the NASA's one, does a really good job of this. So you can actually see the million degree plasma flowing around these coronal loops. And the higher the definition, the better. So when you see these, and, and I really wish the SDO was around when I was doing my PhD because it would have come in helpful but I think it was launched it was launched a few years after I'd, I'd finished um, you're able to actually see these very very small scale events happen on the surface of the sun and then work it into your theories about how the sun works and see if they match up you're able to do some really good science it's basically like laboratory science mm -hmm. with a star that's on our doorstep that's it's crazy stuff. that is crazy yeah so uh, if you are curious by the way about how the sun looks in all of these different wavelengths NASA uh, and the SDO have put out some incredible footage. We analyzed some over on DNews, which we can put the link to uh, that in the description, but uh, we kind of explained what that meant. So if you see the sun and it looks purple, this is certain wavelengths and it looks green, they colorize it so you can yep. see the different things. It's not actually the green part of the sun, it's just they make it that color so that you know without having to look up, oh, it, this is filter AA38299. It's like, no, no, this is just this temperature yeah. range. Yeah, and, and by looking at different filters and different temperatures, you're able to look through the different layers of the atmosphere of the sun, all the way down to like the photosphere where you'll see these beautiful sunspots. And sunspots are really important for space weather, as, as we yeah. will find out. Ooh, okay, so this is how we look at the sun. You can take a telescope, like a normal telescope, but don't do this at home, and then you can put a special filter on it and then point it at the sun and pick up that information. But it still does seem like you're just using telescopes. But we can also use radio telescopes, right? That's kind oh, yeah. of what that's what they were doing at ISCAT, uh, but they were looking at the atmosphere, not directly exactly. at the sun. Yep. But if I point a radio telescope at the sun, does it look completely different? It does look different, yeah. I mean, and you can look at the sun in many different wavelengths. So, interestingly, you touch on a cool subject. So, uh, NASA's uh, New Star mission, which is basically a telescope that looks for highly energetic events around black holes. Mm. It actually got repurposed. Well, it didn't get repurposed, but they just sort of pointed it at the sun to see what what would happen. And they actually saw these very, very energetic X-rays being generated in the atmosphere of the sun. And we'd never really seen them before because we never thought to have a telescope that can see such high, en high energy events. And basically what it was seeing was these nano flares happening in the atmosphere that we'd never seen before. It produced this beautiful image of the sun that you wouldn't necessarily see with solar telescopes because solar astronomers didn't think of actually building something that can me measure such high, en high energy X-rays. Yeah. So they actually saw a phenomenon that we thought existed 
but we'd never seen them. So That's it was kind of cool. So yeah, the sun generates all different types of wavelengths and you just have to use the right observatory to see them. And those observatories use different filters, especially optical telescopes, because then you can see the different layers and learn something new about the structure of the sun's atmosphere. That's so cool. Wow. Well, so tomorrow though, we're gonna learn why we care. Yeah, why do we care? I mean, come on. Yeah. I mean, it's, What's the, point? it's the sun, it's, it's What's there, the point? Then no matter what, it's just going to be hanging out for another yeah. couple billion years, but whatever. We need to study it, and there's actually a really great reason, so make sure you tune in tomorrow for our last episode in this three-part series, uh, talking to Ian about his studies with the sun. Let us know down in the comments if you have any interest in learning more about the sun, because I know I did. I didn't know that much about the sun. If you have any questions or anything that you want us to talk about, you can find us over on Twitter, at Trace Dominguez for me, at Astro Engine for Ian. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow.